Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Community Platform. Abuse of anyone, any human being is never acceptable. Abuse of women, children, elderly people, grooming for sex, sexual abuse of women, it's never been acceptable. Muslim community, Asian community has been in the media far too long. But one gets the impression that somehow the Asian community or the Muslim community has been silent or has not been speaking up or is in denial. There is some denial, there's absolutely no doubt about it, but there has been a lot of work being done on the ground. Whether that is for grooming for sex, whether that is sexual abuse of children, or whether that is domestic abuse of women. We very rarely highlight the good work that is being done. We tend to move on and point out what is wrong with the community. But as I said, very rarely do we say that work is being done. We don't always talk about it. Maybe we should celebrate that as much as we celebrate the negativity in communities. I'm delighted to have two young people who will be telling us some of the work that's being done on various um, matters, e.g. grooming for sex, as well as abuse of women. I welcome Sister, Assalamu Alaikum, Sister Khushnood Ahmed. Wa Alaikum Assalam Wa Rahmatullah. Do you know that's a lovely name? It's the first time I've heard that name. Never heard it before. What does it mean? It means Allah ki Khushnoodi. Subhanallah. It's good to have you. Good to have you. And of course, Majid, our co host. Um, Majid, Assalamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Assalam. You well? Alhamdulillah, very well, yeah. Family well. All family is well. All yes. family well. Majid, I want to start with you. We, we're back in the uh, media, aren't we? You know, grooming for sex. And I, I, I don't want to, um, to talk about a particular area in the country, but the fact is that Rochdale is frequently mentioned. I also know that there has been some activity on the ground to combat that. Tell us more about it. Yeah, so you rightly mentioned that Rochdale has been in the news again. But at the same time, so have many other areas as well where there's been cases of non-Asian non people involved in the exact same activities. Sure. Um, so from a context point of view, it, we're still at uh, stage one and square one when it comes to the media. They like to focus on these type of issues and link them specifically to the Muslim community uh, and also kind of for some reason bring religion into it as well then. Mm -hmm. For some sort of religious reason these people are involved in these activities. So yes, we're back to square one, Russia was back inside the news again. But this time, uh, for another reason, which was that uh, the Muslim community in Rochdale, um, they've been victims of, of this entire scandal. So yes, the perpetrators of this crime were, were Muslim, they were Asian people, they were of Pakistani descent, um, and these crimes were committed. We've, we've, we've accepted you know, there, there are, this, this, this is exactly what happened. But beyond this now, um, the rest of the Muslim community has been subject to uh, Islamophobic attacks, whether that is to do with the dress sense of Muslim women, whether that is to do with the way uh, Muslim men they adorn beards, whether that's to do with uh, general Islamic ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been a lot of attacks in this particular way. So uh, there's been cases where taxi drivers have been, you know, you know, brutally hit, brutally been beaten up mm. uh, by passengers, by white passengers, purely because they blame them, they held them accountable that it was people from your community, your background, who were, who were uh, participants in this abuse of white girls mm -hmm. and therefore we hold you responsible. So it's been the case where taxi drivers as well as local businessmen, um, young uh, people, activists inside the community, they got together and said, well, how can we combat this? So the first thing that they decided to do is have a, a, a preliminary meeting with taxi drivers, mm -hmm. get them to you know, air what they want to say. Uh, and that led to the culmination of a press conference which mm. was covered extensively by media. Yes, it was. And, and looking from outside, that can only be good because it's bringing different factions of the community together to say, we're not going to put up with this. We may That's have an right. issue, but we're going to deal with the issue. That, that political correctness is being diminished slowly. So on the one hand, it wasn't the case of like, you know, once again reiterating, you know, uh, we're against grooming because that's been said a million times before. Everybody has been saying that. But despite that, you know, the Muslim community is still held responsible. And if you repeatedly, you know, um, put forward lies in the public domain, nationally, what is the indigenous population going to think about about you, about what you stand for, who you are as a community? 
that you abuse girls and this is your culture mm. and therefore this needed to be addressed and that's why that press conference that happened in Russia I attended that and I was going to write for a paper for that as well and uh, also my blog as well sure. um, but it was very very important I think mm. um, that everybody realized look it's time for you to articulate the correct views now so look what's happening as a result of this scandal mm. uh, you know it's gone the other way and Muslim community now is the victim not the perpetrators of this crime. Mm. I think we have to be media savvy and we need to stand up and say yes there may be issues but we're dealing with them. Sister, you deal a lot with for instance violence against women, human trafficking. I mean human trafficking? Well, tell me more about that. As we know domestic violence is a hidden crime and when we talk about human trafficking People find it a shameful topic to talk about it, never mind helping the victims or realizing how large is the second mm -hmm. uh, serious crime after murder, mm -hmm. Se second. Nearly 800,000 women from Pakistan, 800,000 women Muslim women, obviously we are Pakistani, majority sure. will be Muslim. They will be crossing borders to UK, USA and everywhere else. Are the statistic shows, and it's uh, the reports, 800,000 women. They have found trafficking, Preston, it's only around the corner. A couple of years back, I remember it was a big article in the newspaper they arrested a person in a terrorist house who had 17 young girls. He was exploiting them for prostitution, all sorts, he was arrested. It is happening on our doorstep. We don't realize trafficking is a very serious crime, but how many people know about it? How many people talk about it? Well, we know about domestic violence, we know about other violence, mm -hmm. This is more hidden than domestic violence crime. Is it, sister, tell me, uh, I mean, uh, uh, later on I want you to tell me about the, 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 your organization that's tackling this, but 800,000 women across, uh, across the whole world, oh. and I assume that these women will find their way into the Arab countries? As well. As well? As well, yeah. And yeah. we don't talk about it? No, we don't. Because what it is, people think it's not serious. They, I think a lot of people don't really know the definition of trafficking, human trafficking. They don't know the definition. Unless you deal with the case. Exactly. And, and yeah. that can happen in so many forms, like there will be um, uh, cases for domestic um, labor, there will be uh, Temptation for visas, mm -hmm. there will be uh, temptation for uh, student uh, mm -hmm. uh, visas, marriage. They will say, it, uh, for example, in Pakistan, a lot of people going to fall into this um, temptation is that they want to go abroad. They want to make their life better, so they will come to England or other countries. And they will and get, get caught up. Caught up, yeah. Caught and up when they this. come here or they end up, in a, in a place where they found out, like, oh, goodness, we're not going to get the visas, but we are here mm. for so-and-so, so serious reasons. wrong reasons, yeah. Majid, isn't this modern-day slavery? Yes, it is modern-day slavery, definitely. Um, and just to hear about those stories in itself is shocking, because you, know, you wouldn't really associate this type of activity with, you know, country like Pakistan as an example. Exactly. Yes, you know, issues happen and, you know, but to this mass scale, it's very, very surprising. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, definitely it's, um, um, it's modern day slavery. We know quite clearly from our religious point of view, Islam has condemned slavery, it eradicated it, you know, it's to close all the doors that this should finish. Um, and in this day and age, that's still happening. 21st century. In the 21st century, this is uh, in itself, um, yeah, but uh, very concerning. Surely there must be someone. Yeah, but you're talking about. I, I, I'm, I'm gobsmacked. I'm yeah. very rarely am I gobsmacked. Eight hundred thousand. Roughly, roughly, there are twenty. I'm not so sure now about the figure, but the twenty-one million people 
in the world that are trafficked who are mm. going through mm. variety of uh, forms of trafficking are we talking Today's about this world, yeah. in our communities i mean sister here is telling me we don't often talk about human trafficking maybe it's because we don't understand when you talk about human traffic i don't think about people coming from women coming from pakistan somehow mm. yeah i mean normally i think we normally equate this uh, these terms to let's say uh, europe so there's been mm. lots of traffic from trafficking from your human trafficking from europe which has come across in the news in the last few years but for the muslim world that is in, in itself is a shameful thing that this is happening from there but i think this some of the points that you mentioned uh, one is is that this view that we're going to go to the west and therefore that's going to resolve Before a lot of issues yeah. that in itself it needs to be addressed is how did uh, people in that area of the world begin to think that everything that is in the West is all hunky and dory mm. and that, you know, rights are secured and all these little things. It's, the, it's a kind of like the glitz and the glamour uh, yeah, of, of the Western world and we need to go there and to put yourself in that situation in itself, I think, is to do, number one, to do with that mindset that, you know, let's run away from here and let's go to a better place. But grass is always greener on the other side, Majid. Yes. You know, when you have um, if you're only going to talk about the subcontinent, you have poverty, you have disease, you have unemployment, you have terrorism. Why shouldn't people want to be in a better place? And where is the better place? Well, it's not going to be in a uh, subcontinent. It will be to the, they're going to look to the West because the media is pouring out, churning out the good life. Yeah. And this in itself is something that should awaken up serious people in, in mm -hmm. that country in Pakistan as to what the situation is, that people need to leave the country in order for them to secure a better future. That doesn't really make any sense. You know, your population is leaving your areas to go into other countries. Rather, you know, there should be a society, there should be a functioning government which says, right, okay, we are here to look after you. Mm. But as we know from previous discussions, that has never ever been the case. Well, but don't you think it's very similar when we say trafficking, outside when they are, say, perpetrators, call them perpetrators they they are uh, sort of offering you <coughs> they're offering you good they're offering you better life abroad don't you think forced marriages of young girls is also trafficking it's also falling in that category yeah, that parents yeah. when they arrange their marriages they arrange marriage mm -hmm. but in reality it's forced marriage Girls young as 11 years old, don't you think that is trafficking? Yeah, I, I wouldn't disagree with that. Yeah, I mean, um, that in itself is not a marriage, it's a sale. It's a business transaction. And in itself, you know, how a parent or people inside a family could do this to their, to their daughters or to their nieces, to their, you know, grandchildren, it's something which is far beyond myself there then. Yeah. However, the, obviously we do understand there is a certain reality of you know, extreme poverty. You know, poverty in this country used to be defined in the past, let's say a good 15 years ago, that if a family couldn't afford to go on a holiday, that's, you know, that would be considered as a poor family. You know, obviously things have drastically changed since the financial crisis, where now absolute poverty, mm -hmm. which simply means is that people can't even afford to even put food on the table. Now that, is, that reality, people have been facing that for decades. So sometimes you can see, you know, that there's or they almost feel forced into a situation to do an action but even then, even then, conscious and your religious values say look, this is not something which we should proceed ahead with you rather lead a life in a dignified manner rather than sell off your children and do this, or do this and again, once again, it goes back to the issue about a government is supposed to be responsible for its citizens you know, we had rule, Islamic rule in the past where our rulers uh, Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab he mentioned that I fear that on the day of judgment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask me that when the goat tripped on the road of Iraq, on the roads of Iraq, that why did you not fix the roads? So this is not talking about human beings here and their value and their dignity and their honor. This is the talk about animals and how Islam even values the, you know, the, the life of an animal and its treatment. So in our societies today, this uh, political setup, it's failed the people miserably. And uh, you know, when you see these scenes, people committing suicide as a result of poverty, with their children in their hands and running into traffic and killing themselves, it in itself is a sad reality. Yeah, but can I ask you, you mentioned that the government is responsible for few issues. Don't you think it's our responsibility as citizens? What is government? Who is government? 
we, we change the governments, we vote them, we want so and so people in the parliament, it's our fault. I think we all have to change our attitudes, the way we judge others, why the countries are going down the hill, because look at the, the situation in Pakistan now. You mentioned people are killing themselves as well as their babies. Why? Because they don't have a voice. They are not allowed to, especially the, the discrimination and the equality between men and women. If women have a voice, if they can come out, for example, the hidden uh, agendas like uh, domestic violence and trafficking, people are so ashamed of themselves to talk about them. If somebody is going through domestic violence, they will be quiet, they will be saying, oh no, I'm not going to come out. For many reasons, A, they love the person, B, they think what the society is going to say to, about me, pointing fingers, oh my God, this and this. I know personally girls from the age, since I was young, and they're still living in the sit same situation, they're still living in the same houses, and they're putting up with it because of our culture, our communities, our attitudes, the way we judge people. So they have to keep quiet. They say, we might as well, for the sake of my family, for sake of my izzat, for Sh sake of my honor. Yeah, that, that, that word izzat really disturbs me very much. But I just wondered, I mean, you both are talking about, you're talking about a system. And unless you have a system which can look after its community, the community is constantly falling short. You know, a, a child looks at his parents for guidance. And I suppose we as people look at our governments for guidance. And I think this is where you would maybe coming from if I've read you right. That's that the yeah. government has to give guidance. It can't resolve everything. And we are, we make up the government. I'm not too sure if the people of Pakistan at the moment or even other parts of the country are making up that government because the government in Pakistan is created through feudalism. Unless you are a businessman or a feudal lord, you can't actually fight the elections. But I agree with you, sister, that culturally we do not allow the voices to be heard. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, I remember um, the dealing with few cases where a woman has been beaten yeah. uh, and she's gone to the Imam yeah. and said, Bay, do something. Yeah. So I think that needs to be challenged too. And you know why that is allowed? Because in some cultures, some families, some tribes, domestic violence, whether, whatever type it is, it's allowed. They think it's acceptable. They think it's justified. Mm. Many, many families, my personal side, of, I mean, in my background, I, w I shouldn't say that on uh, TV, but who cares? <laughs> since I was, since I was uh, very young, I have witnessed domestic violence through our own families. And it's never going to stop until women stand up for themselves and say... How? How, sister, how? How? how do you expect a woman who is beaten black and blue every day, how do you expect her to say, no more? If they say no more, it will never stop. What, somebody have to break that cycle of violence. How? Somebody have to take a step forward. Make sh I mean, obviously, uh, there are reluctant mm. people, and we call ourselves reluctant. We can change the situation. We are the only people who can change the situation. And I'm sure if one person stand up, the next stand up, there will be one, two, three, four, and it will become a group. At the moment, we are all agreeing with the, okay, if, if we say they are reluctant, how long are they going to be reluctant for? How long are they going to be? Majburi kam finish hogi. And that is why people have to realize women need to be educated, they need to have independence. If they are financially self-sufficient, they're not depending on other people. I'm not saying like, you know, forget your family and just say I'm independent and I'm going to have a, a separate, entirely separate life and I will, sure. I will be the boss. 
with respect of your husband, with respect of your brothers and your fathers, you have to realize you are you. I am a person, I am a human being. I, I, everybody knows in, in the world, we all want it to be love, we all want to have respect, we all want to be valued. Where is our value? If you, if you mm. all saying she's mm. reluctant, where is her value? It's difficult. Where sister. is she? Yeah, it is. No, no, you're absolutely. She's right, lost it's somewhere. Okay. Her identity, uh, identity is lost somewhere. Mm. W what I'm hearing from you and what I'm hearing from both of you is that ultimately communities, women communities have to stand up and speak up. You talked about a press conference that you had in Rochdale. Eventually they decided they have to stand up. They have to address it. Rather than allowing the media to address the situation for them, they must address it. Um, let me t let's take this call. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Saeed from London. Yes, yeah, Assalamu alaikum, alaikum salam. Assalamu alaikum, Saeed bhai. Uh, Aapka topic is a beautiful topic, okay? Jazakallah khair. Uh, first of all, I would like to say, whoever follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companion and his all, they will never go wrong. Today, men and the women, they are both going away from that route, that line, reason we are money making people now mm -hmm. we are just looking after the money sake women they want to have a fashion men they want to have a fashion this totally different fashion okay but tell you the truth the prophet sallallahu says love your wife dearly love your wife dearly mm -hmm. okay allah will give you more risk more everything the woman should obey the husband, which is Prophet Sallallahu says, if there is granted to the woman, she obey and she make a sajda prostration to the husband. Those husband who they have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who they making risk halal, who they giving their wife uh, love and affection, these days everybody just their own way is selfishness you put this way second the biggest issue at the moment if the one girl educated she won't have the heart of fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala she have the heart of that education oh, well, look uh, I'm so much okay, proud let me, st let me stop you right there Sayyid Bhai no. I think it uh, 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 an educated woman an educated mother it becomes an educated mother and an educated mother you know, is the first university of a child, so I'm not too sure whether an uh, educated woman is uh, sort of a, an ogre, I, I, I think an educated woman, but it, I suppose what you're saying is what kind of education? I no, I just like to say, uh, let me complete my word. Educated woman, she's educated for dunya. She's educated for this world. She's supposed to educate for deen. Once the deen she has it with the dunya, she is the best education mother, she is the best school, she is the best college, she is, she is the best university for the child. Very kind. For the human, for the husband, Thank for you. the house. No, you're absolutely right. Brother Saeed, Jazakallah khair, Assalamu alaikum. He's made some good points. But, you know, English language is very limited. The, yes, yes, yes. It's a very limited. You know, the, it worries me when you talk about obey. Yeah, and if you look at the Arabic, yeah. he's trying, he conveyed, you know, yeah. that good Muslim people, yes, of course, there's no doubt about it. But I, I, I have uh, issues, uh, certain issues with the uh, semantics. I'd just like to say one thing uh, regarding sure. the call. He mentioned when a woman is educated, mm. she will only think of her degrees. Mm. I believe if you educate one woman, you will have educated the, the entire community. family. Sure, sure. The generation. When she is going to bring children in the world, she is educated so she can show them the right path. Well, you're absolutely right. You know, the education is very important. And I think we need to understand. And, and it, it's so difficult to, you know, you, you need educated women. You, when we talk about education, we're talking about the holistic. 
Deen or dunya? I think we're talking about both. both. It's impossible. Okay. You know, I mean, no, I, I mean, I don't really want to say this live on TV, but you know, I, I, I believe I'm reasonably educated, but uh, I don't think I'm such a awful person. You know, it, it, it's and you're educated. And <laughs> I'm not female. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have to. We're going to have to say you're educated, father. You know. You're a good kid. Thank you very much. <laughs> Live on TV. But Majid, seriously, um, can we assume that tr uh, talking about what happened in Rochdale uh, with reference to the press conference, what's the next step? Where are we going with that? Having a press conference was good. What's the work? What's the outcome? I mean, the panelists who were on there, um, I was also keen to see what they what they're going to offer, uh, and what they what they what they discussed was a few key points. Number one was to have more open days, in whether it's in masjids or whether it's events that they stage for non-Muslims, because there's this whole confusion about religion and you know, you know what are the Islamic social religious values. I mean, it's definitely not messing around with girls. It's definitely not piling them with alcohol and giving them drugs mm -hmm. and making them view you know in necessary material. It's definitely not that. So what is it then? Mm -hmm. okay. So mm -hmm. that's the first thing there uh, about or maybe opening up mosques and centres and holding events which are like exhibition style and people are invited as well as the Muslim community to come in and uh, explore what Islam is all about. Um, they also had a, the taxi association there as well. So one mm -hmm. of the heads was the one who was leading the press conference. Uh, what he mentioned was is that they will have uh, literature in their taxis to give out to uh, to people, so to mm. non-Muslims, uh, mm. um, the indigenous population, whilst they, you know, they are they are uh, hiring the taxis for their service, mm. you know, to give them a leaflet uh, mm. or maybe like a pack or something, which they can read about mm. and get more information about Islam itself. Because mm. obviously they are under the spotlight. It's taxi drivers specifically, mm. and also we've got restaurant workers as well. These are the kind of the two areas which the grooming scandal has focused on what they call the night economy and one, therefore it's, yeah. it's really a case of these people leading some of the uh, activities mm. as well. One of the things the sister has, she's not denied the fact that we don't have domestic violence, she's not denied the fact that we don't have human trafficking, she's not denied the fact that we don't have sexual abuse, okay? Do I find, are we in certain male company still in denial? Do we still have that feeling that doesn't really happen in our community? No, no, the, I think what happened is, is that nobody's in denial about this issue. Because mm. obviously the guys have been jailed, they've gone through a court case. Mm -hmm. There's people who have given evidence against them, okay, and they are convicted of their crimes. What, what the Muslim community wanted to focus on is, look, it's, first of all, it's not an ethnicity-related problem. Because we yeah, look we'll at hold it right there. The people who have been arrested, you know, I mean, there's some uh, people that have been arrested in, in Bristol, they are Somalians, okay? Like was All right? news, yeah. there, were, there were, there were six or seven that have been arrested. The fact is that, and that majority of these people come from a, not maybe ethnic, but certainly from a faith perspective, yeah. haven't they? But there's many other cases, this is the thing. Mm -hmm. What happens is the media likes to micro-analyze information rather than macro-analyze it. If you go for the macro-analysis, you will find report after report after report, and even the... Um, Afzal Khan, who was leading on this case. Um, CPS? Yes. Mm -hmm. He himself, in many statements, even mm -hmm. a year and a half, two years back, when this whole issue was mm -hmm. uh, spilled out in the media, he mentioned, look, it's not uh, that Asians have a monopoly over this issue. You know, the f in this particular case, yes, it's happened. Mm -hmm. But if you look at in generality, you, you get example after example after example. Mm -hmm. I mean, only this week we were hearing about an MP coming out saying that he was abused within parliament yes. in the 70s and the uh, uh, mm -hmm. late, uh, sorry, early 80s. Mm -hmm. And how many programs have we seen where people are one by one coming out against Jimmy Savile, against Rolf Harris, against this person, against that person. These, this problem is endemic. Mm -hmm. And who's leading this? Is it Asian people or Asian? But, 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 does, uh, but the point is... And therefore, we're not in denial. This is yeah. the thing. We're saying put it into context at least. Mm -hmm. We know that these people have committed the crime. However, Nobody said Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim before committing the action. Mm -hmm. So how is it faith related? You know, did they take the name of God before doing this action? No, they didn't. Mm -hmm. By association, they were Muslim, mm -hmm. but the actions, like I said, drinking alcohol, Islamic. drugs, you mm -hmm. know, sexual abuse, rape, filming this. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, you know, when when has that become part of Islam? Anybody 
with an ounce of sense inside them who studies Islam will realize, you know what, this is absolute nonsense. This cannot be faith related. And the guys who did this crime, it was in the capacity as a sexual predator. And a sexual predator doesn't have any faith, doesn't have any ethnicity. They look out for opportunities. And that's what 95% of the other cases, or 98% of the other cases, which involve people from other communities, primarily white, they are sexual predators. And that's the way their whole uh, case should be viewed. But when you start promoting it, something which is ethnicity related or faith related, what we're worried about now is a backlash. When you know a woman walks on the streets, oh, you're part of that community. Your men folk do this, don't you? Right, okay, we're going to try it new now. It's payback time. No, we don't want these reprisals. And therefore, in that, in that frame, this press conference took place, and the organisers are going to applaud them because I think they they, they hosted it fantastically. So, well, where are we going from there? That what I'm saying is that great. I agree. I totally agree with you. Where do we go from there? We've had a press conference. We've said that this is not acceptable and we, you cannot demonize the whole community. Where do we go? Where are we moving to? What's the next step? I mean, a few things that I mentioned mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. exhibitions for non-Muslims mm -hmm. uh, as well as Muslims educating them about Islam and the rules of Islam and you know, how you know, the crimes that have been committed you know, were, were, mm -hmm. were nothing to do with the Islamic faith whatsoever. What does Islam stand for? Number two, all the backlash that we got, whether it was the English Defence League, whether it is Britain's first, do you really believe in these? But we're not... As well as uh, mainstream yeah, politicians yeah. as well, who buried their heads in the sand and said, look, this is an Asian problem and it's linked to Pakistani culture. I'd like to see those people again now come out in the limelight now and say the same thing as well yeah. now, because they haven't got foot to stand on. Majid, that's, that, that's great. You are educating people about Islam, okay? Sensible people do not believe Islam is the problem. They don't. And he, in fact, I'll be very honest with you, the people who may have thought, realized this is nothing to do with Islam. Are we addressing the situation why these men have become predators? Why did they sexually abuse and groom? Have we got to that nitty gritty yeah, part problem? Part of the press conference discussed the sexualized nature of British society today. So everybody is a victim of this. That's quite important to home in on that these people who committed these crimes, they saw sexual opportunities because they live in a But you said the Western. Yeah, in the, yeah, we live in the West. This is the yeah, thing. but hold on a minute. This You've got 800,000 women who are trafficked from Pakistan all over the world. That's, that's the Eastern part of the world. It's not happening in, you know. Why, why, are, why is that happening in Pakistan? In both cases now. <laughs> on the one side, we have Western culture which promotes freedoms. And gives legalities about what you can do and what you can't do in a very, very vague way. So let's take the, this example. If these girls were underage and they were passed around with consent, would that, would that have been okay? It would have. Mm. Okay, I mean, from our point of view, sure. it's still disgusting. But from a law point of view, this is perfectly fine. It's legal. So the only issue about this particular case in grooming was that the girls were under 16. Mm. So my argument is if they were over 16, you're trying to say it's okay. And according to the law, it's perfectly fine. Mm. That's a huge problem there, that there is conflict between the law and the social values which are being promoted. Social values which are being promoted are highly sexualized, charged, and you need to be out there, you need to be doing this, you need to be messing around, whatever. And when people get themselves, they fall foul of the law, or right, she was underage, or right, who's the perpetrator, right, okay, it's your fault. Okay, so it's a, I think a lot needs to be addressed there. Going back to uh, internationally, Western culture and Eastern culture, to be honest, Islam is in conflict with both. So when we mention about domestic violence as being a norm, as being an acceptable practice, Islam doesn't allow this full stop. Anybody who does this needs to feel remorse in their heart that this is an action which they shouldn't have done full stop, and they need to seek forgiveness and make tawbah that they're never ever going to do this again. Now, if there is an Islamic society which applies the social laws of Islam, which again is missing from is a missing link in, in the Muslim world. And um, people's opportunities in life are, and needs are met with a fine and balanced Islamic economic system. So they don't have to feel the need to leave the country and you know seek opportunities elsewhere. If those issues are addressed, then we shouldn't have these scenarios. We shouldn't have somebody who's beating up somebody because the woman can go to the Qadi. Mm -hmm. And the Qadi can execute the punishment upon this person. Well, I'm so afraid... That justice? Can a woman now go to a, a pol uh, police office in Pakistan and air these grievances, no. air these issues 
uh, these crimes, no, it's not going to be taken no, seriously. No. She should take them to court. She can't even get to the court because mm. of you know the amount of money that she needs to spend to even get her voice heard. So the thing is that current setup doesn't do anybody any favors. The political establishment are only in it for themselves. They're in it for the money, for the fame, for the glory, and for their own power. Whilst the rest of the population it suffers there. So in my view, in my humble view, an Islamic system really is a missing link here, from an economic social and from a justice point of view. Only really Islam can guarantee these so long as all the Islamic laws are impl implemented coherently such that they each facilitate each other. So whether that means that Muslim women or any women mm -hmm. living under an Islamic system, under a Khilafah state, that they have the right to education. Nobody should be set at home. At a basic level, every single Muslim woman or non-Muslim woman should be educated at a certain level. After that, if they wish to pursue a career, it's entirely up to them. That's a total clash with the and that's certain why we said, values. That's why we said, yeah. I'm saying is that Islamic values and the way forward Islam promoses, it opposes the values of Western culture as well as Eastern culture. And until we don't recognize that, um, really, to be honest, there's no room for maneuvering and going forward. He what do you think, sister? You think we can, if we change the system and it was an all Islamic Islamic culture, women will not be beaten because Islam doesn't allow? I personally think I think we are wasting too much time discussing variety of religions. We are promoting one religion over the other. I personally think we should go back to basic, start from the beginning. What's and the, what basic? What basic? Basic. When people used to have their doors open. When they used to see if my neighbor have eaten, when but they used it, but, to see. But isn't sister? But isn't that Islamic value that you look after your neighbor? Isn't that isn't that what Majid is saying? That if you had Islamic values, then you will you will respect uh, the the lady who lives next door or the neighbor who lives who you, your neighbor is. Yeah. Isn't that what's the mis what's missing? Of course it is. I agree with him. Mm -hmm. I, I I agree with you. But as you said earlier, these serious issues. Why we are not really understanding the, the, the definition of, say for violence, for example. Violence. How many children in England? 750,000. Do you know that figure? 750,000 children mm -hmm. witness domestic violence. When they grow up, some people, some children, they will never, come, uh, they will never recover from it. Some they will uh, uh, become explosively violent themselves. Sure. Yes. This is. I think we have to start from the beginning. Where I said that that the mothers, we are missing out on a large amount of um, activities from families. D for example, mothers have been exchanged for babysitters. We spend quality time with our children. We never spend quality time with our children anymore when we used to do it or our parents used to do it. Yeah, but this, I, I, isn't they, that because the system, the, the kind of system that we live in is market values that, you know, you have a mortgage which can only be paid by two people working. Therefore, something has to give and there's neglect. Yeah, but again, if we go back to uh, Islamic values, mm -hmm. we have to ma uh, ma uh, make ourselves understand. We have to cut down on our luxury if we are willing to uh, follow Islam. We don't need big houses, we don't need big cars, we don't need big titles. Mm -hmm. We can, we only, uh, we need food on the table, simple lives. We have to go back to simplicity, then we can change. But the system today, this is what I'm, the point I'm trying to make, the system that we have, which is a, a capitalist situation, doesn't allow that to happen. And I think this is what you're saying, isn't it? That the, the system is in conflict. I'm mean, going to give the example of the yeah. West and these yeah. issues happening. Yeah. So, I mean, your, your statistics, I can't fault them because that's the, just the truth there. 25% of crimes reported on 999 calls are to do with domestic violence. Domestic violence. When football matches they happen, when there's major tournaments, whether it's the um, European Cup, so whether it's to do with the World Cup that is on, the m amount of domestic violence that happens in this country increases. There's more phone calls. Yeah. So Ni I mean, uh, two, sorry, 2012 it was 15.5 increase. Good God. So if we are working on the ground, we we supposed to bring it down. Instead, it's increasing. Why is it increasing? Alcohol. 
obviously is that's alcohol the joint, part yeah? of the problem uh, in alcohol that? is definitely part of it as well there yeah. then so i think what we what we need to look at is what we're trying to do is look at it a bit more holistically mm. and i think as an individual what can i do i'll do my best to save somebody to help somebody out so nobody's going to say that if you see somebody in distress don't help them out if you know somebody's in trouble you know we work in certain places and sometimes a person may come up to you and say look i'm facing this problem nobody will say look don't talk to me go and talk to somebody else you will try your best but that in itself won't be a, the only only thing that we can do there because there's much more that needs to be done on a more of a grander scale so when we look at, for example, the grooming issue, I said, this, you know, we need to look at it not from an ethnicity point of view, but the fact that we're living in a society where sex is completely, c continuously promoted all the time. Mm -hmm. So young people are talking about it, you know, elderly people, whoever it is, mm -hmm. it's in your face, and therefore people become victims of that, and therefore internationally as well, it's a similar situation. If you see somebody in, you living in Pakistan, you see somebody who is a victim of this type of abuse, domestic violence, try your best to help them out. Definitely do that. Mm -hmm. But the, on the other hand, there's a lots of other barriers that need to be addressed, which need to be removed for those issues to be to be open and for them to be resolved. Your organisation, you know, we've talked about the problems. You work on the ground. You deal with these problems on daily basis. Mm -hmm. Tell me, how do you deal? Somebody who's uh, connected with human trafficking or domestic violence, they come to you. What do you do? How do you help them? We try to empower women, basically, that we provide them the platform, we provide them the skills, we will signpost them, we will send them to the right area where they can get help, proper, uh, yeah, help, and then they can start training with us. When they are trained, say for example, sewing machinists or other areas, we want to rebuild their lives. That if they left home, if they they gone through the situation and they come to us and we will say, yes, we will definitely help you in such a way that you will become financially self-sustainable. If they have financial security, mm -hmm. they are going to do better for their children and they will have a better life in future. And you deal only with Muslim women or are you no, deal? It's all walks of life, anybody comes to us, women, any color, any race, any religion, we are there to help. So what, what are you, uh, you have an organization? We have an organization, we were in uh, Preston before and now we moved to Blackburn mm -hmm. and our organization is called Fair for All and uh, we are based on uh, Waterfall Mill in right. Blackburn. That's amazing, absolutely So if amazing. anybody wanted to uh, seek yeah, our help, yeah. they can uh, take our number from your board sure, sure. and get in touch with us. Right, and that's amazing, amazing work. And this is what I'm saying. Here you have a lady who is doing brilliant work because she's addressing the issues. What I want to know is who is addressing Sorry, the I have to say one more thing. So I am doing my bit as an individual that I don't care what the governments are doing, what the, the mm -hmm. parliament is doing, what the the highly uh, top figures are doing as an individual person in the world I have to make a difference I have to do deal with these things personally because I think it's my duty to help another human being if I know somebody's in trouble it's my duty it's my full responsibility to help them but you could not do that if you number one did not have the education did not have the resources yeah. did not have the support you couldn't possibly and the voice help. Could you? You couldn't possibly no. help at all. If I, if I didn't uh, understand the, the, the situation or the problem, I will never be able to find the solution. No, no, so this I'm is the problem. If brilliant. people are saying they, 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 they shouldn't go, uh, get the education yeah. in the beginning, mm. and if they're not educated, if they're not understanding what's happening to them. I uh, met somebody a couple of uh, years back, the person, the girl was so young that she didn't realize, the, she didn't know the definition of the domestic violence, mm -hmm. that her husband was psychologically abusing her. And she was so, help she, she couldn't understand what was happening to her. So imagine that <laughs> person, so young.